Hey there! In this video I'm going to show and explain to you the making of process of this picture, which was the special drawing for my water drop tutorial. I will also tell you what inspired me to make this and why I made it for the lovely singer called Adriana. So let's get right to it. At first I made a strongly simplified sketch to determine the general composition. Important was that the snail and a tree weren't in the center and that they weren't too small or too big. The view angle is slightly from above, as if we look down into the field and find this cute scene. Sketching out the snail turned out to be not that complicated. The most difficult thing is the shell and making sure that it looks convincing in the perspective I chose. Other than that, I mostly followed the references that I had open next to me. Adri's sketch took me significantly longer. When drawing humans, you have to be a bit more accurate. Our eyes are specialized for recognizing human features, so if they are off, then the picture will look weird. With that being said, I seriously need to study human anatomy more. I kept the style for our facial features fairly simple, similar to how artists of Studio Ghibli draw faces. Speaking of, this picture is strongly inspired by the movie Arrietty. Since I needed to draw water drops, and you know, water drops are quite small, the picture had to be some kind of macro scene. So I thought of drawing a grass and flower field up close. Then I thought of tiny animals, like bugs and snails. I know that Adriana loves snails, and that's how I came up with this idea. Pretty straightforward actually. So similar to the movie, her outfit is kept very simple, and you have these stitches that look huge on her. The leaf that she's holding is an ivy leaf, just like in the movie. And we're getting to the water splash on the leaf now. This is the most important connection to my water drop tutorial. Similar to how I showed it in my video, I started with the basic shape and a bunch of ovals for the crown spikes. There is a difference, however. The leaf surface is not perfectly flat and horizontal, so the shape kind of looks stretched out towards the bottom. The bottom part of the splash has more momentum, and so the crown spikes of the lower half are much longer. Also, from this angle you can see the hole in the center of the splash. Other than that, it works pretty much just how I explained in my tutorial. And then I get right to painting some of the plants. I didn't even bother with making sketches. I could have made some, but I also wanted to learn not to rely too much on them. They take a lot of extra time and are not always necessary. For something as detailed as the snail and atri, sure, it makes sense. But for these simple plant shapes, it doesn't really matter all that much. Rather than planning everything from the beginning, I just go with the flow and add more and more plants as I see fit. I mostly just looked at macro pictures of flowers and grass fields and some screenshots of the movie Arietti. Other than roses, I don't really have that much practice with drawing plants, so it was challenging. You are going to see me make lots of corrections here in this video. Also, I have no idea how any of these flowers are called. I just looked at pictures, thought to myself, oh, these look pretty, and just added them to my drawing. Well, I also wanted to make sure that their colors fit in well. For example, you can't see any blue or red flowers. I basically limited it to yellow, violet and white. I changed the way how I draw lines once again compared to the previous time-lapse videos. I'm going for a solid color now and making precise similar strokes instead of painting the lines as I did before. None of these ways is particularly faster than the other, but using solid lines makes it much easier to color the drawing. In this way I can just use the paint bucket tool. Here and there you still need to color some sharp corners, but that's mostly it. Giving the snail skin some texture, you can see that I struggled a bit figuring out the best way to paint it. After looking closely at some photos, I was able to see that the texture follows some vague pattern and direction. And so I redid it at some point, and the second attempt turned out much better. 
Its little house also gets a nice paint job. I simply drew a bunch of lines in varying brightness values, ranging from yellow to red. I made sure to let the strokes follow the curvature of the shell to emphasize its round shape. And then I colorized the lines. I want to avoid using just black as the line color. It contrasts too strongly with the rest of the colors and doesn't fit in very well with the otherwise painterly look of the rest of the picture. Adriana also gets some colors now. I wasn't so sure what color I wanted to give her dress. In the end I went for purple, because it goes well with the flowers around her. There is a lot of shading needed because of a leaf umbrella. The light by the way comes from the left front and it's still the middle of the day so the sun is fairly high up. I made a mistake with the drop shadow of the leaf stalk, later I'm going to correct it though. The shadows get some kind of outlining at the edges, that's supposed to be reflected light. I tend to add more of these reflections than what normally would be realistic, because they add more shape. I went for a somewhat flat shading style, almost cell shading. Without those reflections, the shady areas would otherwise look too flat in my opinion. The dress gets a woven texture. For that purpose, I imported this close-up picture of some kind of fabric, set it to multiply and used the mesh transformation tool to adjust its shape to her dress. Since this dress is super tiny, the fabric's texture has to look extra large to emphasize this miniature look. Adding some highlights too, I especially wanted to make sure that the hair and shoes look very shiny. And this nail of course also gets some shading and highlighting. It's especially important that I get it right on its shell, so that it actually looks like a round spiral shape. The skin and shell are very shiny and reflective, so I had to make sure that the highlights look extra bright. I wasn't really happy with how the dress looked like, so I redrew it. It didn't make much sense that it swung forwards, although the picture clearly shows that she is walking forwards. Instead I gave the dress a very simple shape. I also gotta say that I still have a lot to learn about drawing clothes too. Another detail that I want to point out is that I start to color the inner edges of the shades, normally with warmer colors. A nice little trick to make your artwork more colorful. And the light reflections on the dress this time get some texture too, drawing them as several lines instead. Giving the rock some texture and painting the shady areas. I don't have to be all too accurate about the drop shadows. The rock is quite irregular and the drop shadows could also come from plants not shown in the picture. Just gotta make sure to make the edges of the drop shadows very grainy to emphasize the texture of the rock. Working on this tall plant in the background now, getting the angle for all of these leaves right is a challenge in itself. The leaves that are pointing towards the back are painted with darker colors, so that I can establish a good sense of depth. I'm giving these leaves quite a bit of details, like the veins and shiny reflections. But the further these plants are going to be at the back, the less time I spend on them. They are going to get blurred out anyways. Then I quickly painted some earthy looking background, just to have something in the back most layer for now. Adding more variety to the plant life, some clovers, more flowers and some of these dangly things, I don't even know what they are. Just saw them in my references and decided to add them. If you haven't watched Arietti, I recommend that you do so. I especially love the beautiful background art of that movie. 
So much love for detail, the gorgeous garden and the tiny homes with all of these little tools and furniture, it's so lovely. The story is also very sweet, but of course I'm not going to spoil it for you. The plant layer all the way at the back is reduced to mere simple shapes. It's going to get so strongly blurred that there is no point in adding any smaller details. And I gotta say, it's a lot of fun painting this way. Very refreshing, not having to worry about detail work for once. Then I'm fixing the shape of the flowers. The big ones at the bottom have been redrawn completely. I came up with a better way to paint them. I simply switched back and forth between bright and dark color and painted one petal layer after another. And then I give the flower more details by adding darker shadows and some highlights. The end result is not too bad, at least I think so. This painting was definitely some good practice for me, making me paint things I never painted before. I'm also adjusting the shape and coloring of the grass blades, making them look smoother and give them more texture. In order to make them more interesting looking, I mixed in some colors that aren't just plain green. The colors shift more towards yellow in the brighter areas and towards blue in the shadows. And I gave them some dry spots with brown and yellow here and there. I did some color balancing, but I still felt like this piece looks a bit lifeless. Then I remembered, of course there need to be bugs too. Now I'm not really a fan of insects, I do admit, but there are some that even I adore, for example bumblebees. I think they're cute, shaped like a round striped fuzzball. And I also like bees of all sorts, because they are super important and useful for the environment. I also added a tiny cute ladybug to bring in a bit more diversity. And then back to the defining theme, the water drops. So this picture is supposed to show that it just recently rained and so there are water drops sitting and hanging on the grass and flowers. Just as I described in the tutorial, I make sure that the darker half is facing the light source and give them some shiny highlights. Also, do not forget about the drop shadows. There are still some larger drops falling from the leaf tips and roofs. That's the reason why she is holding this leaf umbrella. I imagine it would be quite uncomfortable or even painful if one of these lands on your head when you are that small. And Adri doesn't just want to protect herself, but also her snail friend. She caught that drop just in time. To have an easier time painting the splash, I made a temporary monochrome background, otherwise it is hard to distinguish the details. The light reflections and shadows are not super accurate, but they also don't need to be. Splashes like these look wobbly and messy, so you can be a bit messier too painting them. I was quite liberal with the shapes and just had fun with it. However, I had to do a lot of adjusting to make sure that the splash stands out and also still make it look like water. I imported another image and applied it to the rock as extra texture. Also here and there I added some brown and green as indications of dirt and moss. Well then, let me tell you more about Adriana Figueroa. As I already said before, she is a singer, on YouTube and Twitch to be more precise. She has a beautiful voice and made several covers of video game, cartoon and anime music. She even gave a couple of them her own lyrics and she also wrote some original songs. Nowadays she is more active on Twitch, but it is still absolutely worth it giving her songs on YouTube a listen. Her voice can also be heard in a couple of video games like Smite and Cadence of Hyrule. I learned about her and several other musicians through TRG, the Runaway Guys. She is part of that large and awesome group. It is also fun to see her interactions with other people from TRG. She is such an energy bundle, for better or worse. 
She can be such a wholesome sweetheart or a mischievous troll. It's all goose and fun though. Alright, let's get back to the painting. I give the grass blades at the front more texture by drawing these bright yellow lines as highlights. I'm adding more light reflections all over the painting because it felt a bit too dark, not enough contrast. The backmost plant layer gets some shiny water drops too. In that case I'm painting them as near bright spots. Again, more detail is just a waste of time. I really love how sparkly it looks. It makes me want to paint something like this again in the future. It's a lot of work to paint all of these tiny drops and I definitely underestimated once again how long it is going to take me. But I still enjoy painting them. It's really simple and easy to get some pretty looking results. Now on to the blurring of the different layers. It was a bit more complicated because these depth layers consisted of several layers. I wasn't able to merge all of them together because they had different layer settings. What I'm trying to say is there were a lot of layers that I needed to individually blur. The focus was on Adrian and the snail of course and the further away a layer was from that focus point the blurrier it became. This is pretty easy to adjust by using the Gaussian blur effect, just gotta remember the numbers I used. I still wasn't satisfied with the level of sparkliness. So I made the light reflections especially shine using the soft airbrush tool over them. Also applied another texture layer over the whole picture. You probably won't see the difference. It's basically only noticeable when you zoom in real close. Added a vignette effect and my name tag. Tried to do some color balancing, which was just me playing around with the sliders and curves. I barely have any idea about this, just constantly comparing the before and after and keep what looks better to me. And then I finally corrected the drop shadow of the leaf stalk on the dress. Some final touches and fixes here and there. And that's it, here is the final picture once again. This took me quite a long time to finish, but I liked the end result and I learned a lot while making it, especially about painting plants. Alright then, if you want to watch the tutorial about how to draw water drops, then you can find the link in the description. You can also find many other links and info there. Thank you a lot for watching, have fun drawing and see you next time.